Here, let us remove any debris that I may have introduced. And yeah, I know it's debris, not debris, but I felt like saying that. So I got uh, a set of new gaskets here. And I'm gonna go ahead and maneuver these guys in. We're gonna go ahead and start getting the uh, manifolds. We turn to their position, put back into place, and then bolt it in. Yeah, that's gonna go like that. Yeah, the uh, those headers did not come with this heat shield manifold, but I think it's kind of important to have that. Otherwise, we're gonna melt some stuff like this valve cover and those coolant lines on the other side. So I ordered a set of uh, OE, OE heat shields, which, which also come with uh, new gaskets, and these are the ones we're gonna use. Okay, so I decided that that uh, new header is larger than the original, so I ended up removing the steering shaft from the, uh, from the steering gear down below. I thought I would be sneaky and do it without, but I was wrong. So... Let's maneuver this, uh, this manifold in. You are gonna fit past that uh, dipstick tube, I'll tell you that. I'm not taking this motor mount out. Probably shouldn't have set up. Whoa, there's a little flashlight grab. Right, you go in there, I got it. Super tight squeeze. Good, 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 good. All right, let's slip our gasket back in between the header and the head. And we can get some bolts into it and get it bolted up into position. Nice and shiny. All right, trying to get some of these started might be a, something of a chore. how we're gonna do this. Put one right there. I've got another one in my right hand. So what I'm gonna do, slip that one in. This isn't gonna work the way I thought it was. All right, another one. Let's find that hole up here in the front. Do the front. Oh no, I need that. Let's not drop it again. It was easier pulling these out. So if I dropped them, I didn't have to care. Now, if I drop them, I have to retrieve them. And I do care about that. All right, there's one. Come on, one on the bottom. Let's see if I can't, I can't even see it. I can feel it, maybe. All right, there's one. Cool, I got bolts in the top and in the bottom. We're getting some. All right, another bottom bolt coming in. These are getting harder to do as we go along. There's uh, not much space to play with, especially with the extra volume that these tubes take up. These are why headers are a bear. Okay. Yeah, this is fun. Um, no sockets here. There's a there's a tube in the way. Uh, we'll be here for a little while doing this. A little bit at a time. Maybe I can fit a wrench on it. Close. Yeah, this is this is gonna take a little while. I'll check back in with you guys when I get this tight. Give me about two hours. See you soon. So I've just uncovered an interesting problem. You see, the dipstick tube is supposed to bolt to the uh, the header bolt that goes, or the manifold bolt rather. It bolts the manifold on on that front head. 
The issue is, or on that front head bolt, the issue is the new bolts are only large enough for the flange, and I can't make this meet that new bolt, otherwise it'll pull it into the valve cover. So what I think I'm gonna do is use one of the older bolts with this nut on it to space it properly and torque it, and that way I can retain the factory style mount and then bolt that thing straight to this stud how it's supposed to be. So uh, basically what I'm saying is uh, I'm gonna make this work and it's gonna look good. If I can uh, reach, that's the key here, reach. Cause I have no space. Yeah, there we go. This is boss, I like it. Now that can go over top of that like it's supposed to, and I just need to take a wrench and tighten down that nut right there. And as for the rest of these behind the tubes, under the heat shield, I just need to tighten those by hand, and then I'll sneak in with a wrench later and uh, finish those off. This is uh, quite tedious, because there is zero space to play with. Let's see if I can start to reach some of these bottom fasteners. I'll tighten the bottom ones first and then I'll come back and tighten the top ones. Click. All right, there's one. Wow, last time I put headers on something, it was like my truck. It was many moons ago. All right, no, 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 I take that back. I did a couple sets on, uh, my buddy's CTSV, or I did a set on my friend's CTSV. I did some on a Mustang once upon a time. The problem with these things is they can, they're prone to leaking because there's not a lot of metal there and they're made out of tubes and those tubes go through heat cycles and they crack or they warp the flange. Sometimes they're more trouble than they're worth, especially right now. Definitely more trouble than they're worth to me. But they're still cool. Click. One more click. There it is. All right, coming up from the bottom. All right, there's one that's tight. Another. Clickage. Good. I can barely fit a universal on these upper bolts. The two in the middle aren't gonna happen. I've gotta do those with wrenches. But we're getting somewhere here. Hit my finger. There's a good click. All right. All right, looking left again. Let me reach back in there. I'll tighten up this nut that I put on the stud. That's my own uh, personal touch. It's not uh, not part of the kit or the conversion or whatever. You'll notice that the stud stays stationary. The nut is running down the threads on it and it's putting clamping force against the cylinder head. And that's what's gonna bolt this down and seal it up. Hmm. Nope. Yep. A little bit more. 
clicks. Nice. All right. Looks like I just got the two here in the center, and this side should be good. All right. Slowly but surely. I think I'm lucky I don't have to deal with spark plugs. Usually there's plugs right here between the tubes, but on this Hemi they're up top, so we're good. Whoa! I killed you guys. Now that one, that one might be the, the bane of my existence. Well, I can see it, but I can't really reach it. If I can get this tool on there, we're good. I think. Uh, yeah. About that. Hi ho, hi ho. Soft to work we go. Yeah, we'll be here for another 15 minutes doing this. There's a very real possibility these are never ever coming out of here ever again. Ever. So I hope they never leak. Alright, let's try this again with the long one. Need leverage. Tighten this up. I can't do it with that little stubby. It just doesn't have the reach. We're getting there. No! A little bit more, come on. Okay, yeah, that's all it's got. Okay, I'm getting the steering shaft back on. Yeah, let's get that guy bolted back in. I've already got the bolt. I don't think you guys can see. Yeah, it's down, down right here. But hey, as long as you can hear it, then you don't need to see it, right? Maybe. Maybe if my commentary is good enough, you don't need to see. There we go. Steering shaft clickage. All right, that guy's in. Woo, get some. Okay, I've got the dipstick tube bolted on. Bottom bolts are tight, top bolts are tight. The flange over here, I'm gonna leave that off until we get the other side on. So let's head over there and do that right now. I got a sneaky suspicion this side's gonna go uh, much better than the other side. And why is that, you say? Easy, because there's not a bunch of stuff in the way. Go, what are you doing? Go on there. Easy, don't start banging away on your keyboard just yet. I have method to my madness here. You shall see. See, the manifold's got slots at the bottom. So I would like to take advantage of those slots. I can. No way, you're gonna fit in there. I shouldn't have said anything. When will I learn to keep my big mouth shut? So it's not to anger the car gods. Yeah, there we go. All right, let's sneak one of these top bolts in. Easier said than done. Come on now, get in there. What are you doing? Oh wait, my, my angles are all silly here. Hang on, I see what I've done. I'll try to go straight at this and I can't. Oh good, it hit the ground. That's good. 
Yeah, there. That one goes there. Let me tighten that up a wee little bit so it keeps this from flippy flopping. Are you summoning me? Can you? We can borrow my space from it. What? Can we borrow your space for a minute? What? Which space do you need to borrow? The one that don't have a car in it. Oh yeah, absolutely. Help yourself. Go I'm make it. To ask. I'm afraid you won't he should be afraid. No. He called me racist. Uh, All right, got that one in. We need to get. Let's get this one in right here. That's the, the pain in the butt one, I think. I need to get that one screwed down as much as possible before I torque the rest of these so I don't put any load on it because I won't be able to get many tools on that fastener there. Not at all. Can't even get fingers on it. I'll give it the two finger treatment, one on each side. It takes a little longer, but it's guaranteed to get you there. There we go. And we got another one come in on the back side over here. Again, I can't get my tool on it because it's got a, a tube in the way. If I thread it, I think I can hit, hit it with my socket and just run the socket kind of sideways. Yeah, that'll work. You do what you gotta do at all costs. Meticulous and boring doodly doos. Thank you, doodly doos. People are about to click away about your your whimsical anecdotes or musical anecdotes, whatever they are. Not antidotes. That's for like uh, the opposite of poison. Anticdotes. Antics. Root words. Gravity. You know what? I'm just gonna tighten that one first. That'll show everything show the whole car what's up. There we go, now we're getting somewhere. Not anymore, slippage. Uh -huh. A couple more turns and I think that one's good. Oh yeah. Okay, let's get a couple more of these bolted in and tight. I've already got one down below there done. And then one in the back done. Also down below. There's a click. Uh, the rear one, I can get the rear one. All right guys, a couple more of these and uh, I'll get the collector bolts installed and we'll get this thing started. Look you here. That's not gonna work. See it? There's a heater hose sitting on the manifold. I'm gonna have to reroute that. Whoa, that could have been a knuckle buster. I wasn't looking. I turned around, I was looking behind me. And I didn't see it start to, to walk off of the parsoner here. Yeah. Check these upper ones again. That one's good. That one's more gooder now. Beautiful. All right, there's one more right here at the bottom. Can't see it. There we go. Kicks. Oh, premature. Oh no. Give me back my socket. 
the socket was it was still attached but it found its way between the motor mount and the block if it would have come off the extension i would have lost it forever that would have been bad okay clicks all right it's it's attached all right looking left a little bit we're ready to set these collectors up they gave me new bolts for those as well we're gonna get them started on this side and then we'll go and get them started on the other side then we can run them down go on you get in there Caught it. Slick, yeah. Yeah, let's uh, try this again. Yeah, stay. Don't fight me on this. Preliminary clicks. Let me hit the other side real quick. Yeah. All right, I just tightened down the other side. Let me hit this side again. Pickage. And I still got to uh, do something about this heat shielding right here. That's not gonna work. But I am gonna fire this up real quick just to check it for leaks before we continue. There we go. Try to put these up a little higher somewhere just so I don't ruin it on my first start. Oh, I know. I'll fix it with more pry bar. It works every time, 60% of the time. There we go. All right, let's go start things the engine. Beginning engine starting leaking checking sequence now. Nice. Leaking right here. I'll fix that later. And no leaks over here, that's good. All right. Okay, so we're back here at the passenger side. We can see here that this heater hose is resting on top of this manifold. And that's not gonna work, because this is gonna melt and then it's gonna dump out all the coolant. So what I'm gonna do is detach this hose from the uh, brackets that are holding it onto the cylinder head. And I'm gonna try to reroute it a little bit so it uh, fits a little higher up and doesn't touch the exhaust. I've also got some insulating heat shrink or uh, insulating wrap that I can wrap this tube in here to help prevent some of that heat from cooking this hose. This is definitely one of the issues you run into with uh, aftermarket exhaust is you get conflict between components. We are seeing that firsthand right here. We've got some metal wire, and uh, after I get this heat uh, heat shielding on, I'll wrap it in wire so it stays put. We want to make it nice and tight. Came unwrapped. Don't worry, we'll fix it. Zip ties. Zip ties fix everything. Relax, guys. Relax. It's not as not what it looks like.
No, seriously, it's, it's not what it looks like. I've got some uh, metal wire. And that's what I'm gonna tie this with. Because I'm well aware that that zip tie will melt instantaneously. This guy, we're just gonna twist until it uh, cinches down on that shielding, and then we'll wrap it, and then tie it and twist it again. Uh, one more turn. Uno mas. Make it nice and tight, there. We can lose that zip tie now. We don't need you. Oh no. I think I uh, wired that zip tie also. Let's tighten that a little more now. See, there are no mistakes. Only happy accidents. Bob Ross. Kind of need more wire, but this will do. I'll make it work. Oh, it's like surgery in here. got it unclipped. What have I done? I had it, then I lost it. Oh, fail. Big time fail. Do it again. Oh, hit you guys in the face. Again. Sorry. Didn't mean to startle. Okay, that is successfully heat shielded. So now what I want to do is push this up a little higher and then resecure it. I'm also going to zip tie these hoses to its little uh, little bracket thing in an effort to keep them from sliding. I'll move this one up, and this one can sit on top, and then I'll zip tie these together, and that's gonna locate these away from that exhaust pipe. Another zip tie. It's actually two hooked together. Our powers combined, we have a single zip tie. There. This is good. It's not going anywhere. Okay, let's go to the driver's side and uh, see what the deal is with that flange leak. 
Okay, back on the driver's side. I think all I need to do is just loosen these up and then reposition everything. It appears I don't have it as straight as possible. And that's causing uneven clamping force. So, let's get back in there with our extension and swivel. Did you hear me, extension? Get in there. Got that loose. Give it back to me, please. I don't want to play your games. There. That's about all she wrote, because the threads are hitting the, uh, the collector. So I can't go any more on that one. What's up, buddy? Okay, let's see if that seals this thing up or not. Restarting the engine. And it still leaks. Not cool. Adjust this clamp some and see if we can't get it to fit any better somehow, some way. Ah, it's stuck again. Give it back. I know. I need to put some washers in there. Doing this all wrong. Doing this all wrong. Wrong tools and everything. I have a new strategy. A revised strategy. It's going to be a new revised strategy. There we go. Real simple. Different wobbly bits. Maybe we'll do it with uh, no wobblies. Yeah, that's effective. All right. Ah, uh, now it's hot. There's no going back. All right, problem solved. There's a nut on there for a spacer. That should be sufficient. 
The problem was is the shank of this bolt was running into the uh, the flange on the collector. Ow. Right here, it was running right there. So I spaced it accordingly. That was not good. Gravity. Not today, gravity. Today's an anti-gravity kind of day. That's what we'll call it. I don't think that's far, that's enough. tools back please thank you all right folks we are entering the home stretch now this uh this truck is about done i've got to get uh this fender well back in i've already done the driver's side this one's going back in next a couple bolts and a couple clips and we're good to go we'll go out and hit the road and uh, make sure it does not leak under under a load there we go Word. Back in, that's back in, that one's in, that one's in. Very nice. Alright, we'll get that one first. Click. Mm, slide in, please. What are you doing? Get in there. Back side here. That one. Clicks. One down below. Another one up top. I love it when all the hardware starts to disappear. Wonderful. Another. Click. There we go. There we go. lost it rolled away under my toolbox
All right, let's go finalize this repair on our test drive. Ooh, we're climbing in without scratching the door. Let's back it up some. I'll re-extend my, uh, my mirrors here. And one more on that side too. There we go. All right, safety clicks. Backing out the auto. Honks for safety. That's to alert pedestrians that there's a motor vehicle approaching. I mean, they don't care, but at least I did my part, you know? All right, let's put a load on this and uh, make sure it doesn't leak. Ooh, nice. Oh, it sounds like a Dodge again. Fantastic. Squeeze around the tool truck here and see if I can fit. Yep, 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 yep. We're good. All right, guys, I'm going to give this one quick spin around the block just to finalize everything. Uh, of course, I'm going to recheck that heater hose and all that good stuff just to make sure it didn't come loose and is going to melt later on. So uh, that being said, I'm going to go ahead and close this video out right now. Hope you enjoyed this video. Uh, again, uh, I apologize for having to make this a two-part video. It ran a little long and, um, it, you know, it is what it is. So uh, that's what I had to do. So uh, anyway, again, and as always, thank you for watching. And uh, most importantly, do not forget to have yourselves a great day. See you guys later. End of Doge. Sounds good. Doge power. Doge powering down. See you later, Ramicus.